My name is Andre. I'm a summer PhD fellow at Consensus Lab. And in the next few minutes, I will show you how you can take a pseudo code from a textbook or a theoretical white paper and convert it to an actual implementation using the MIR framework. And MIR is being developed by the Y3 team whose Slack avatars you can see at the bottom of the screen. Um, the outline is pretty simple. We are going after a high level view of MIR, we are going to take a textbook algorithm, convert it, uh, implement it in MIR and run it. The basic abstraction of MIR is a node. And the node consists of modules, which communicate by exchanging events. These events can also be intercepted and later replayed for debugging purposes. But uh, basically, it's just an event loop. And this is the core of MIR. And we want to keep this core as small and simple as possible. And most of the complexity is actually implemented on top of this core. And today I will talk uh, about a specific component uh, called DSL, which stands for Domain Specific Language. And uh, the goal of this component is to provide better abstraction, better programming abstractions, because the core uh, it provides you with an interface to implement a module. But implementing module directly, implementing this interface directly, it's akin to writing software in assembly. So there is a natural conflict between keeping the core as simple as possible and uh, providing the user with nice abstractions. That's why we need this extra layer, or, which is the DSL. One of the main goals of DSL and MIR in general is to mimic the way that theoreticians uh, write their pseudocode in textbooks and white papers. This snippet of code is taken from the famous textbook of Christian Cachon, Rashid Garavi, and Louis Rodriguez called Introduction to Reliable and Secure Distributed Program. So while there is no single universally accepted pseudocode notation, there are some common trends. For example, you don't see people opening TCP connections or marshalling and not marshalling messages in the pseudocode. You are also quite unlikely to see uh, people dealing with mute access and concurrency in general, again, in the pseudocode. So, but what, what you see instead quite often is this error, um, is this event-based paradigm where uh, the protocol is basically represented by a set of event handlers, which are executed one at a time without concurrency. So this way they can access the shared state without any race conditions without any problems. So um, other than normal event handlers, uh, what is quite common to have in the pseudocode is uh, condition handlers. So this handler here is being executed when this condition over here is satisfied. And this is something completely strange to most programming languages. At least I've never seen any similar abstractions in programming languages. So just for the context, I'm going to quickly explain you what this pseudocode does. Um, it actually implements an abstraction called Byzantine Consistent Broadcast. And uh, the goal is for a single node, um, for the leader, to be able to broadcast a single message to a fixed set of nodes. And uh, it should be able to do so consistently, consistently, which means that a Byzantine leader, a malicious leader, will not be able to send different messages to different nodes. So you can see it as some sort of uh, equivocation prevention mechanism. Okay, so let us quickly compare the pseudocode to MIR code and see uh, how they are similar or different. So the code in, in mid DSL, it starts from this command, from this fun function dsl.new model, which creates this handle M, which is sort of representation of our module, which we'll use to register handlers. And as for the state, we can simply actually use a local variable. Here is an example of a simple event handler. In the pseudocode, what happens is uh, when the reader wants to broadcast some message, it iterates over the list of all processes 
and it sends to each process the message. This is the first step of the protocol. And how we implement it in MIR is very similar. We invoke this upon broadcast request function, which registers a hand handler for the broadcast request event. So the event has some data. Uh, and here we check some condition, which in the pseudocode, we simply could leave a comment that, okay, this handler, it can be only pro invoked by process S, which is the leader. So in the actual code, we probably want to actually check this condition to avoid some silly mistakes. Um, then we also save the data to the state, but it's a minor detail for it's mostly for convenience. And then we invoke the DSL send message, which emits an event for sending the message. And it sends this event to the networking module, which is um, mc.net. And the event contains the message that we want to send and the list of nodes to which we want to send this event, which is in this case, all nodes. So you can see that transformation from here to here, from the pseudocode, the actual code, in this case, it can be done almost mechanically, even though the actual code tends to be a little bit more verbose. And here's this slightly more complicated example. Here, um, uh, when a node receives some message, it checks some conditions. And if these conditions are satisfied, it um, creates a digital signature and sends it, sends it back to the leader. And this is something where Mir slightly differs from the pseudocode because creating a signature is an expensive operation. And recall that we want the protocol uh, implementation to be basically single threaded. So that's why we actually uh, create, uh, we do such heavy operations asynchronously. So instead of just creating a signature in place here and uh, sending it back to the leader, we um, send a request to the crypto module to create a signature for us. And eventually the crypto module notifies us that the signature is ready and only then we send it to the leader. So the moral here is that sometimes for the sake of performance, we may actually take a single event handler in pseudocode and split it into several event handlers in MIR, but still the transformation from here to here is still pretty simple. So. That's which is the main goal here. And finally, there is a cool thing that uh, MIRDSL actually supports conditional handlers, which is fun because no other programming languages, no real programming languages support it. And, but it, it's actually quite common to use in white papers. So yeah. And yeah, let me just quickly show you that it actually runs that it actually works. So this is a very toy application. As I said, it's a simple broadcast, which allows the first node, which is a leader, to send a single message to all other nodes, which are represented by the four terminals here. And we're just going to say, hello, protocol labs, for example. And yeah, as you can see, the message is delivered. And it is done through a Byzantine full tolerant um, algorithm. So the leader will not be able to equivocate. Okay, and finally, I'd like to mention that MIR is still work in progress. There are a lot of challenges that we need to address. For most of them, we sort of know how to address them, but we are still working on that. And I guess that's it from me for today. And you can also come and chat with us in MIR Dev uh, Slack channel on Filecoin Slack. Thank you.